The Jimi Hendrix experience is over. The acid rock musician died today in a London hospital, apparently from an overdose of drugs. During his short career, Hendrix flailed his electric guitar into some of the most unusual sounds of an unusual music. Oh, I was completely shocked. Totally and utterly shocked to hear about his death. I didn't break down. I apparently was very silent, but I didn't fall on my knees or cry or anything. I was just like, oh, stunned. It's difficult to explain, but I was young. So quite resilient. And when it sinks in and you get used to it and all of it dies down... All you've got left is your reflections, you know. It was a time when everybody knew everybody else. The rock scene was small and everybody went to the same places. It's not like that anymore. If everybody want, went to one nightclub and they moved on to another, everybody would move on to the other. <laughs> he wasn't billed. I think he just did an instrumental. And I arrived at that time. And everybody was stood quite still watching. But certainly his guitar was pretty way out, you know, people were uh, aghast, really. And then I just went to sit with all my friends, uh, of which he was, you know, amongst them. And we're all just, you know, laughing and talking and uh, everything. And Jimmy beckoned me over and said, oh, can I just speak to you a minute? And he said, I think you're beautiful. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I've heard this before. <laughs> admit that I'm not really a great fan of Jimi Hendrix <laughs> of music, you know. I do enjoy it and I, and I did at the time, but not all of it. <laughs> to me, when he walked in the room, he was just Jimmy. And I used to nag him, same as I nag my husband, <laughs> you know, about dropping things on the floor. <laughs> and I used to go to the gigs but not all of them, because I wasn't really that interested. <laughs> so I went to some of them if it was convenient and everything. But I, I, you know, I used to wander outside when he was on stage and have a cigarette. <laughs> I know people are horrified to hear this. <laughs> and sometimes I'd just, you know, go home by myself. I was making mashed potatoes and they were lumpy and he complained like hell that they were lumpy and blah 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 and I just lost my temper <laughs> threw the plate on the floor so it shattered to pieces of the broken pieces of yesterday's life and then I stalked out of the house in a huff you know as only 20 year olds can do and uh when I got back the next day, because of course I had to go home in the end, <laughs> he'd actually written the song. Well, but Jimmy called me Mary. It was it was just a habit of his, you know. So my love, Katharina, and me. Yeah, well, that was definitely so my love, Katharina, and me. Uh, and I said to him. I'm not coming with you. <laughs> I 
I'm not overwhelmed by it. I mean, it's just one of those things. I mean, you live with somebody, they use you as an inspiration when they write their songs. I mean, it stands to reason. You use your experiences, the people around you and what you've seen to write your songs. I mean, every artist does it, don't they? Drugs. I, I wasn't interested in that scene. That's probably why I'm still alive and everybody else is dead. We did see each other again after that, but I wasn't going to be involved in that kind of scene. I have to be honest with you, I don't listen to any Jimi Hendrix songs. If they come on the radio, I, ter I, I tend to turn it down or turn it off. A lot to do with the memories. I, do, I just don't want to keep reliving it, you know. And it doesn't remind me of the music that I loved. It reminds me of Jimmy, the person that I feel so sad, lost his life. He didn't have a chance to grow up and mature. He was surrounded by hangers. Ah, oh, look, I can see it. I can see where it all went wrong. I can see what happened. And it's so hard to describe. It's like watching... I, I wouldn't say a sinking ship. That's too, too much, you know. It, it's like watching somebody that enjoys um, all the attention and then becomes dependent on it. And I think this is common with a lot of artists. I don't think it's just him. But had he, be, had he lived, he'd have lived through it. It's something that sort of hangs around your neck all your life. <laughs> to have been um, associated with somebody that is so famous... I mean, in death as well as in life. More so in death, actually. No one knows. Nobody, nobody I've met knows. Not even my daughter-in-law's family. I keep it completely quiet. <laughs> <laughs>